Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, I'll show you how to code this cute looking donut app UI using Flutter. I actually found this design from Dribbble, so I'll make sure to link that below if you want to take a closer look at it. But in this video, I'll show you how to create this using our code. Now, the first thing we need to do before we create a UI like this is to make sure to prepare any icons and images we might need. And so you can get this from anywhere, but I recommend maybe this flat icon website. And so you can just search donuts and get whatever you want. So I've already pre-selected some images, so you don't have to choose these exact ones, but if you do want these ones, I'll make sure to put them in my code below so you can access all of these assets and images as well. Sweet, now in your project, go to your library and I'm just gonna copy these folders in. And then make sure in your project, we have to tell it in our pubspec.yaml that we're gonna introduce some assets. So make sure to import the two folders. And just to keep everyone on the same page, I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and in my main function, I'm running my app, which brings us to this home page, which is just a blank scaffold. So you should have a blank white app like this. Now the first thing is let's just start with an app bar, which by default, I don't want this blue color. So I'm going to make the background transparent, but you can also see that there's a bit of a kind of shadow thingy. And that's because of the elevation, which I'm going to set to zero. And then the first icon I want to bring in is for the leading position. So I just want to create a little menu icon here. And also we can specify some icons in the actions, which is on the right hand side. Cool. And let's just use a bit of padding on the left and right side just to calibrate this. And Maybe we can make the icons a little bigger as well. Sweet. Now remember, we can also wrap this icon in a icon button. So this will make it tappable. So if you unpress this, then you can open the drawer out and, you know, do whatever functionality you need to do. But for this video, we'll just focus more on the actual UI. So we've got these two buttons up top in the app bar, which is good. And now let's go to the body of the scaffold and I'm going to use a overall column. Okay. Now in the children, let's just create a little plan. So at the top, I want a text widget just saying I want to eat. And then the main part of this UI is really to use the tab bars and the tab bar view. So let's just start with the text widget at the top. And let's just style up this text. And if you look at the actual design, they made the word eat to be a different style. So I'm just going to put this in a row and make it two separate text widgets. And we can make one of them bold and you can change it up like this. Cool. And just for the padding of this text row, I'm just going to split it into the symmetric to make it horizontal and vertical, we can adjust individually. Great. So now it's time for the main portion of this UI, which is a tab bar. Now I made a separate tutorial to cover just specifically tab bar. So check that out if you need more information on that, but I can show you real quick how to use it now. And so the first thing we need to do is to wrap the entire scaffold in something called a default tab controller. And so it's got a red squiggle because we have to specify the length. Okay. So let's just put in say the number five for now, but let's just come up to the top and create our list of tabs. So essentially I want five tabs. So the donut tab, burger tab, smoothie tab, pancake, and the pizza tab. Okay. So we can actually specify out the tabs right here. But just to make our code nice and clean, let's encapsulate it into a different folder. So for these, I like to create a folder called util, which is just utilities. And so let's just put in a new file called my tab so that we can reuse this multiple times. Cool. Now, if you think about what varies between tab to tab, the first thing is the icon. 
So where is this icon located? Because then we can give it into this image.asset widget. And let's just see what the icons look like. If you come back to the home page, now we have to specify the icon path, which for the donut, it's going to be in library slash icons slash donut.png. Let's come back to the body of the scaffold and now we can create our tab bar and give it our list of tabs that we just created. And also for the length, instead of specifying a fixed number like five, we can now say the length of my tab list. So this will make it nice and dynamic. And so if I restart this, sweet, there is our there is our icon for the donut. And we've only got one thing right now, so let's just copy and paste the other other four. So we have a total of five tabs. And sweet, there it is. Now we can just come back to the my tab.dart file to sort of decorate up the template. Okay, so I'm just going to start off with the decoration in the container. And I like to add a kind of a gray background here. And let's add some padding. And of course, you guys know I don't like any sharp corners. So let's curve the border radius. And I think that's looking pretty good so far. And by the way, you can see the little indicator, which is blue by default. So if you want to change that, probably a better idea to come to the main.dart file and just specify it in this theme so that it applies to your entire app. So you can change this primary swatch color to be a color of your choice. Cool, so far so good. So now that we've got the tab buttons at the top, we now need to create a tab bar view, which essentially is just displaying the pages of each tab. Okay, and I'm gonna wrap this in an expanded widget to just fill the entire rest of the screen. Cool, and same thing for the tab bar view, we're gonna need the individual pages for each tab. So I'm gonna need a donut page, burger page, smoothie page, and so on. And for these guys, I'm gonna create a new folder called tabs. And let's create the five tabs here. Sweet, and let's just start with the donut tab. And I'm just gonna create a state list widget. And just so that we can see the difference in the center, let's just create a text widget saying donut tab. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it for all of the other tabs. And let's make sure to import it in our home page. Okay, let's check this out. So if I restart this, sweet, you can see it says donut tab and now we can flick between each of these individual tabs. Cool, what that means is now you can just come to the donut tab and this individual file to decorate the rest of the UI. Okay, so in here we're going to need a few things. So we're gonna need a list of donuts. So I'm just going to call it donuts on sale. And for each donut, I want some attributes. So I need the flavor of the donut, the price, the color, and also the image. So let's just say like ice cream, $36 and it's blue and just give it where the image is located. Okay. And I'm just going to create a few more flavors. Sweet, and in order to display this, I'm gonna use a grid view. And specifically, I want this cross axis count, which essentially is how many objects do you want in each row? And so I want just two. And then now we can build the item. And so again, we could just really create the container and what it looks like in this file. I'm just gonna call it donut tile and we can just code this in a separate file just to make our code a bit cleaner.
And again, thinking between each donut, what were the different attributes? So we had the flavor, the price, the color, and also the image location. Okay, so let's require these ones. Cool, so let's just start with the donut color. We can now specify in our donut tile all of these different attributes. Okay, and we set up the data structure really nicely in the list. So we could just say the donuts on sale for a particular index. Let's get the zeroth one for the name, uh, for the flavor rather. And the same index but one to get the price, two to get the color, and then finally three to get the image name. So if you save this, we can now see the color is being applied. And these colors are very strong. I actually want a very light color. So let's change the strength to 50. And now we can decorate this up. So I'm just gonna add some padding. And I actually want some padding on the grid itself. And let's make the corners nice and round. And for the child of this container, we're gonna use another row. Oh, sorry, another column. Okay, and again, it's always a good idea to just plan out first before we, before we start creating. So I need the price on the top, and then I want the picture, and then the flavor underneath, and some buttons. So let's start with the donut price. So you can see now the price is showing. And I'm going to wrap this in a row just to move it to the front, and then use the axis alignment to move it to the end. Cool, now let's just make this a little bit more pretty. And by the way, because it seems like we're using the, the border radius a lot, I'm just going to create another double just to store the number in here so that if we later want to change it, we can just change this one variable and everything will apply. Okay, sweet. And the donut color is very strong. Again, I just want it to be a strength of 100. And the donut price, let's also kind of match up these colors. Okay, so honestly, this is looking really good. Now, I'll just show you one nice trick, I guess, when it comes to making the UI look a little a little nice is currently, if you look at the border radius that we applied to the price container, we applied it to each corner, right? All four corners. But you can actually just specify the only and you can choose which corners you want to curve. So let's make the bottom left curved and you can see like it'll be sharp on the rest of the corners and let's just add one more on the top right okay so if I just curve the bottom left and the top right you'll get this nice effect so I think that's I think that looks pretty good and so we're slowly making our way there now let's do the donut picture there it is and I don't know why not all of them are showing let's just restart this Oh, there it is. Cool, and now obviously it's too big, so let's just add some padding. Now, if you come back to the grid view, the way the grid view works is it makes all of the children into squares. So if you want to change the aspect ratio of your children, then you can change that. So I'm actually going to go for 1 to 1.5. So that essentially makes it a longer rectangle. So it just gives us a little more space. And let's just fill out the rest of this UI. So the donut flavor. And just another text widget underneath saying the company name. And I like to make a little contrast like this, make the fonts a bit different. And then finally, let's add some icons. So just maybe like a heart icon and then a plus icon as well to kind of mimic the UI.
cool and looks like we are a little bit overflowed and I actually want to just clean up some of these numbers I just want to optimize this a little bit and sweet that's pretty much it so I'll make sure to link this code below so everyone can take a look at it and access the images and all that play around with it and let me know if you guys have any questions I'll try to come around and help you out but other than that thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one peace <laughs>